What's up guys, today we're gonna make a bot that plays Guacamole for us using OpenCV's match template. So let's dive right into it. First things first, I have my workspace folder with my wacabot.py file. A subfolder named imgs where we will store our images and in our .py file I pasted the link to the game that we will be botting. So let's open it and manually play it once so we set a standard for our game bot. After we watch a wonderful act, that is. My final score was 3250, so let's beat it. Let's pip install the modules we will need by going to our terminal and typing pip install opencv-python and pip install pyrogui. Since I already have them installed, I will get the requirement already satisfied message. After that, let's move to our code and import them by typing import cv2 and import pi out of GUI. We will also type from time import sleep to have some time to prepare the game before running the script. Pi Auto GUI will get us screenshots and will click for us. It has what we can call a cooldown setting, which causes it to wait a few seconds between each function. This will actually hurt the bot, so we will remove it by typing pi Auto GUI dot pause in caps, and we're gonna set it equal to zero. Next, we need to get our template which is the image we are looking for. So we will manually take a screenshot of some moles and try to find something similar in all of them. After some time, I decided that their hands and noses are pretty much the same. But since their hands move too much, I will use their noses. So let's cut it out using the almighty paint and store it within our IMGS subfolder. Back in our code, let's create a variable called template and set it equal to cv2.inread, which will open the image. The parameter for this function is a string of the name of the image, which is nose.png for me. But since the image is in the imgs subfolder, we need to add imgs forward slash before the name of the image. And so it will read imgs forward slash nose.png. We will need the dimensions of the template, which are its width and height. But before that, let's gray our image. I will create a template underscore gray variable. We could just add the zero black to the inread function and that would automatically make it gray but there is something I want to do with the colored image. So let's set our template underscore gray variable equal to cv2 dot cvt color capital C. And the first parameter is the image that we want to convert, which is our template image. And the second parameter for this function is the code for the color conversion. In our case, we want to use cv2 dot color underscore rgb to gray which as you may have guessed will convert our red green and blue image to a grayscale image now let's go ahead and get the width and height of the template image for this we will create a template underscore w for width and template underscore h for height and set them equal to template underscore gray dot shape. And we will need to slice it like this so it returns the values in the correct order. So the logic is this. When you work with images, normally you get the width first and the height second. But for some reason, OpenCV returns height and then width. So slicing the tuple like this will return the values reversed. Up next, 
we need the game windows dimensions. Let's create an x, y, w, and h variables. To get their values, I will take another screenshot of the game window. Note that I take it on full screen to make sure we don't move our coordinates when we scroll up or down. The relevant area is about here. If we move our cursor to the top left corner of the area, we will get its X and Y coordinates. If we expand the selected area, we get the width and height of the window. Now that we have our values, we can set our variables equal to 523 for the X coordinate, 247 for the Y coordinate, 875 for the width, and 679 for the height. Let's give ourselves 3 seconds to prepare our game window before the script starts running by calling the sleep function. Its parameter is an integer or float of the seconds we want it to wait. In our case, 3 seconds is fine. For the main part of our script, let's create a while loop because we want the bot to always run unless we tell it to stop. When the game window is visible, we will take a screenshot of it, so let's call pyautoguid.screenshot. The first parameter in this function is a string of how we want to save the image as. So let's save it in the imgs forward slash folder and just call it image.png. The second parameter is a tuple with four values, the x and y coordinates of where we want the screenshot, and then the width and the height of the image. So let's just type in our variables. Now that the image is stored, let's open it in a variable called image with the cv 2 read function. Inside this loop, we will actually have another while loop because we want to process the same screenshot several times before taking another one. This will save some time for the method that we are using. We need to gray our image, so let's create an image underscore gray variable and copy the same function with, as with the gray template. To perform match template, let's create a variable called result and set it equal to cv2.matchTemplate. The first parameter is the image. The second one is the template. On both, we will use the great versions. The third parameter is the method. You can use whichever you like, but I prefer this one. To extract the results, let's run min max lock on the result. Since it returns four values, we will unpack them on min underscore val, max underscore val, min underscore lock, and max underscore lock. Remember that max ball returns the highest matching score and max lock the coordinates of where that score is on the screen. To make sure we always get the best matches, let's establish a threshold. So if the max ball is equal or greater then 0 0.8, which is an 80% match, we will consider it a good match and proceed to run pyautoguy.click. This function takes in two arguments, 
the X and Y locations of where we want it to click. So let's set X equal to max underscore lock zero plus X. Remember that max lock returns a tuple with the X and Y coordinates of the best match. So if we add the best locations X coordinate plus the X of where the screenshot was taken, we will get the exact X coordinate of the best match. Then we do the same with the Y coordinate, but we access max lock index one and we add the Y coordinate of where the screenshot was taken. The next thing we want to do is draw a rectangle over the nose of the mole we just clicked on. So we can run match template again on the same image in case there is another mole to be found. This is faster than taking a screenshot once again. To do this, we will update the image variable by setting it equal to cv2.rectangle. This function will draw a rectangle on the image. Its first parameter is the image we want to draw the rectangle on, so let's set it equal to our image variable. The second parameter is the points 1, which are the x and y coordinates of where the rectangle should start, so we can just set it equal to the max lock. The third parameter is point 2, which is where the rectangle should end. Let's set it equal to a tuple. The first element is the x coordinate, which we can get by adding the max lock index 0 plus the template width. The second element is the y coordinate, which we can get by adding the max lock index 1 plus the template height. The next parameter is the color of the rectangle which we specify through a BGR tuple. So we're going to do blue, green and red here. Let's make it red. So we're going to do 00255. Finally, we specify the thickness of the line. If we type minus 1, instead of giving thickness to the rectangle, it will fill it with the color that we specified. In this case, it's going to be red. Once we have drawn a rectangle, the secondary loop will start again and look for another match. But what if there are no matches? So we're going to do else break. So if there are no matches, the bot will exit the secondary loop into the main loop again and take another screenshot. Enter the secondary loop to run match template on this new image and start the process all over again until the end of time or until we decide it should stop. So let's see how it works. Something important to know is that if your bot is running and using Pi Auto GUI, you can move your mouse to the top left corner of the screen and it should end the script automatically. If you're using VS Code like me, just use the stop code option and if you're using a terminal, you can close it. It did really good. After the third try, it broke my personal record. There seems to be some RNG involved. So the maximum number of points you can get per run is not always the same. Another problem that I could identify is that some letters pop up like when you reach a certain score and the bot can't see the molds behind it. So I guess it's up to you guys to find a solution for that.
As a cool bonus, let's show what the computer sees. We need a smaller copy of the image, so let's create a variable called image underscore mini and set it equal to cv2.resize. The first parameter is the source image, so let's set it equal to image. And the second parameter is a tuple with the new width and height. Let's just hard code some numbers to about half of the current size. So let's do 450 for the width and 350 for the height. Something to note is that the width and height must be specified with integers, not floats. Now we can call cv2.inshow. The name of the window will be vision and the image we want to display is the mini underscore img. To keep the window up and updating every time a screenshot is taken, let's call cv2.wait key and specify a delay time of 10 milliseconds before each update. I will comment out the clicking part so we just see what the computer sees instead of clicking. All right, this should work perfect, so let's do it. But nope, something went wrong. Okay, so I type show instead of in show, and this should fix it. And here it is. I don't know about you guys, but I just love seeing this. So if you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you tried your go at a bot like this one, let me know what score you got on the comments below. And I'll see you guys later. Thank you.